Hi and welcome to today's video. Um, the last time I posted we were at the pumpkin patch and some things have happened since then. Um, I had Mia Grace. Um, I'll show you her in a minute but she's sitting um, next to me. Um, but I thought I'd share just a super quick um, labor and delivery story. Her labor and delivery was a lot faster, a lot easier than Riley's was. Um, a lot less traumatic so it went really well. Um, but it kind of started out the same way that Riley's did. Um, so I actually, I didn't, I did not expect to go into labor with her. Um, my due date was November 11th, um, and we had her on October 20th. So about three weeks early. Um, I had gone to my 36 week appointment a few days before and my doctor and I had talked about, I was excited because we had talked about inducing me at 39 weeks. Um, because of my gestational diabetes um, and that was it I was just excited to know I was gonna get induced <laughs> um, I didn't think I was going gonna go into labor naturally before 39 weeks so um, yeah I had no clue I had been feeling crampy that week but nothing nothing that I thought were contractions nothing that I thought was doing anything um, I mean I figured my body was kind of getting ready but not like that ready um, but it was Wednesday, October 20th at 2 a.m. I woke up to go to the bathroom, stood up, felt like a little gush of fluid, and I was like, no, that's not my water. There's no way. Um, but I went to the bathroom and was spotting, so I called Kaiser because I was like, mm, I think it definitely could be my water. I woke Nathaniel up and was like, I'm going to call them just to see if they want me to come in. Um, it was 36 weeks and 6 days, and so... Um, I called, told them what happened. They said to lay down for 20 minutes and then stand up and then see if any more like fluid leaked. So I laid down on the couch for like two minutes and I was like thinking that, oh, this is kind of uncomfortable. I'm going to go lay on the bed instead. I stood up, huge gush of my water. So um, I called them back and was like, yeah, I'm going to come in because clearly like this is my water. Um, so... My bag was mostly packed. I think we forgot a couple little things, snacks. And, like, I don't think I packed Nathaniel deodorant, so we had to order some at Target, like, for drive-up um, across the street from the hospital. Um, but um, we are like, mostly ready. Um, but Nathaniel had to grab the car seat. Like, there's all those little things. We forgot a blanket for her. It was raining. We forgot to bring, like, a baby blanket because we were just, like, not expecting this to happen at all. Um, we were like kind of ready, but not really. Her crib wasn't totally ready. Like our room wasn't totally ready. Um, luckily all her stuff was like washed, her, um, clothes and stuff, but we were just not prepared, um, for that. So we were kind of like running around trying to grab stuff and just, um, yeah, it was just a little bit crazy. Um, but we probably got to triage around like 3 a.m. Um, they waited and checked see if it was my water, confirmed it was my water. They did a cervical check. I was already like four to five centimeters dilated, which was surprising. So they admitted me. Um, I started having some contractions, um, asked for my epidural. I was behind a couple other people in line, so I don't think I got my epidural till like 6 a.m. And by then I was feeling contractions and some of them were pretty strong. So um, I was really happy once I got that. Um, my mom showed up around then. I think shortly after I got my epidural, I called her at like I didn't call her at 2 a.m. like I did with Riley. I waited till like 5.30 when I knew she was going to be awake. Um, but yeah, I think things moved kind of slow. Like I think I was stuck at 5 centimeters for a while. And then they started me on Pitocin. Um, and then after that, I think things moved pretty quickly. Um, the epidural didn't work as well as it did with Riley. Riley, it worked too well. But this time it didn't work as well. So I was feeling like lots of pressure, um, some pain with the pressure like as I got more dilated um but overall like I was doing pretty okay um I'm trying to remember um I had to get COVID tested uh there's nothing like super eventful I started feeling more pressure so they checked me again I think I was at an eight and then like a little bit later they checked and I was like ready to start pushing um so yeah, it was pretty fast, um, pretty easy. I felt, with Riley, I felt kind of sick, like, during the transitional phase and stuff like that. And with this one, I didn't, I didn't even think I was fully dilated, aside from the fact that, like, there's more pressure and I could kind of feel like I wanted to push. Um, 
but pushing took maybe like an hour I think a little less than an hour with Riley it was three hours so with Mia it was less than an hour a little bit less than an hour um, but she was also sunny side up Riley was sunny side up and Mia was sunny side up but we didn't know that until she came out um, but she was born at 11:28 in the morning she was six pounds 14 ounces um, 19 and a half inches long everything went well with her delivery so they were able to like let her lay on me have skin to skin all the stuff that didn't get to happen with Riley so that was that was what I really wanted I just wanted to be able to like hold her right away and do all that stuff so I got to hold her for a long time until they took her to do um, like the baby exam and then I let Nathaniel and my mom hold her um, but yeah I mean it was pretty short and sweet um, I definitely felt more with this delivery like it was more painful because again my epidural like didn't work as strongly um, but the good thing about that was I was able to get up and move right away um, once we got upstairs to like our recovery room I was able to walk um, move my legs um, I didn't walk right away it took a little bit of time I was still a little wobbly but um, with Riley I couldn't move my legs to like the next morning so I think part of that had to do with pushing for so long too so this delivery was just a lot smoother, a lot easier, pretty, like I said, pretty simple. Um, it took nine and a half hours from the time my water broke till the time that she was born. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any more details. I think that's like, that's really it. It was pretty straightforward. My water broke, got there, had some contractions, got my epidural. A few hours later, pushed her out. <laughs> um, but I'll show you her. She does have like a few things that they're concerned about. She's born with the same lump that Riley was born with. So we're assuming at this point that's a tethered cord. She did get an MRI um, in the hospital, but we don't have her follow up with neurosurgery until the end of November. But we have some other appointments coming up and I'll just share updates on those um, as they happen like in vlogs. She was born with a club foot as well. And we took her to an um, to a podiatrist appointment and they don't need to cast her foot or anything like that if we just do exercises it should be fine um but um yeah she's just got some stuff like that going on and then we were in the hospital for two days um because I had the gestational diabetes and because she was a little bit early um they had to check her blood sugar for 24 hours and then they kept us for an extra day just to keep an eye on her and she had her MRI and all that kind of stuff anyway so yeah um but I'll share more updates on her like health stuff I guess as we find out what's going on we're assuming a tethered cord at this point and um that the treatment plan will probably follow pretty closely to what Riley's was but we're not totally sure because we don't know like the severity or anything like that um it seems like her case might be more complicated because we're talking to a lot more specialists, but I don't know if that's like because she's our second child with this issue because we are having a consult with genetics. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so that's kind of up to, but I mean, she's doing well. She's healthy. Um, I've been pumping and bottle feeding like exclusively. Um, she's not really getting any formula because I've been pumping enough for her. Um, so that's exciting breastfeeding. I could just tell it wasn't going to work out. It was going to be the same thing that happened with Riley where she wasn't going to gain weight. And so I just kind of pushed to pumping instead. Um, and I feel happy with that choice. And I think she's doing well with that choice. So, um, yeah, things are going well. She's sleeping okay at night. Um, waking up every few hours. But I'm still getting some sleep. So that's good. Um, Riley's doing really well with her. She likes to say hi to her. She likes to pet her. Um, if I'm burping her, sometimes she'll come up and pat her back. Um, she's been really sweet with her. Um, she gets really excited when she sees her. So that's been really good. Um, but yeah, we're really happy um, to have Mia here because she's just so sweet. Um, but I'll show you her. You can see she's still tiny. She At her last weight check-in, she was still a couple ounces below her birth weight. She was 6 pounds, 11 ounces. Hopefully, it's been a few days since then, so hopefully she's at her birth weight now. Um, she has her next appointment, her two-week appointment, on November 8th. So, we'll see. But I think things are going pretty good, like with feeding and stuff. So, yeah. Here she is, just hanging out. Um, she's sitting on the bobby. I know these are recalled, but 
we use it when we sit on the couch still because we're like right next to her. Um, oh, you get mad. Um, she's wearing newborn clothes and they're too big. Her hand is like right here where my hand is and this whole thing is like not on her arm. Um, because she's still tiny and she's wearing preemie diapers. Hopefully she'll be out of those soon though. Um, but yeah, here she is. You say hi. She's wide awake. It's like 6.30, 6.45. I wanted to film this before I got Riley up. Um, I'm going to put her in fresh jammies because these ones have spit up. Before I get Riley up, kind of get ready for the day. Um, I expected her to be taking a nap, but she's not. Um, but yeah, we're just hanging out. Like I said, she's sleeping pretty okay through the night. Waking up every few hours. I'm fussing a little bit. But I think that's just because she gets a belly ache. Um, and it's more fussing, not like screaming. <clears throat> oh no, you're mad right now though, huh? We'll put on some fresh jammies and get swaddled and maybe take a nap. Yeah. Okay. I just tried to give her a pacifier. She's been like, last night she's not been wanting her pacifier. She was taking it for a long time. And now she like doesn't want it. Um, but anyway, that's it for today's video. Um, thank you for watching. Um, subscribe, give this a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. I'm actually probably going to vlog today because um, it's Halloween. So after this video will be a vlog, I guess, of what we do today. I don't think we're doing very much, but still, it's your first Halloween. And Riley is old enough to kind of, I think we're going to take her trick-or-treating. So I look forward to that in the next video, and I will see you next time. Bye.